For those of you seeing me for the first time, welcome to my humble channel. I do recaps after every Atlanta Dream game, inspired by Steve Dangle for the initial idea and the hockey guy for the format. Hope you like it, hope you stick around, and for everybody else, well, welcome back. The Dream lose 61-72 to the Connecticut Sun in a uh, kind of up and down game. Let's talk about it. So the injury report is pretty identical to the last one. Not exactly an ideal situation against the Connecticut Sun of all teams. Though I kind of wonder why Vaughn is out for COVID protocols but somehow allowed to sit on the bench. A little bit weird to me. Now, before the game, the announcers were looking at where the Dream stand at the halfway point of the season. Jeez, we're already halfway through the season. Time flies, eh? I think we're all pleasantly surprised by how well things have gone so far. Not winning as much as anyone would like, especially considering the uh, losing streak that uh, just happened not too long ago. But considering the near total reset after the last season, on and off the court, I mean, how can anyone possibly be disappointed? Yes, there are a tremendous amount of injuries, but look at all the young people just taking the ball and running with it. McDonald, AD, Caldwell, Howard, Durr. This is why I'm not disappointed. It, it's pretty much a rebuild, but damn, are they really doing a lot with it. Tanisha Wright has really improved the locker room and the culture of this team. The front office has done great with what little they had to work with. It's just a great job all around. Courtney Williams returns to Atlanta for the first time since the end of last season. Glad she seems to be doing all right. To start the game, Atlanta's defense is pretty surprising to me. They're not letting the Sun get any shots off. Ari McDonald is weaving through defenders, and Cheyenne Parker is finishing off the plays on offense. Well, that is until Alyssa Thomas gets fouled and she gets the free throw. Otherwise, it's looking pretty darn okay early on. Jonquel Jones puts the hurt on Candace Parker, just digging her shoulder into her chest and displacing her on defense. Seemed like something that should have been called a foul, but wasn't. Oh, well, what can you do? Still, not a good time for that to happen. The Sun are really starting to adjust to the dream now. They go on a run, and Jones draws a foul against Parker. Not sure if that should have been called myself. But Monique Billing softens the blow by intercepting a pass and converting on the layup. Layups being something the Dream have been struggling with lately, somehow. Not a lot of noteworthy things in the last five minutes or so, unless you consider missing all your shots noteworthy. If it was just Connecticut, I wouldn't be upset. But the Dream are missing almost as frequently. They're missing far too many shots, and they're easy shots as well. But on a brighter note, seven Dream players got a point or more in that quarter, and four had steals. 19-17 after one, Connecticut takes the lead. Connecticut scored eight points in the first two and a half minutes of the second quarter. Counting their run at the end of the first quarter, they're on a 10 and nothing run. They have 11 second chance points, and Atlanta has none. Atlanta also has no points in the quarter at this point. Two minutes after that, the Sun are struggling to score, but so are the Dream. Both teams commit shot clock violations in succession, one after the other. John Quell Jones finally gets called for an offensive foul against Monique Billings. I'm, I'm not usually one to complain about officiating, but... It's about damn time they recognize what she's doing out there. 4.50 left in the second. Atlanta still hasn't scored, but McDonald gains possession, makes a mad dash, goes to make an easy pass to Monique Billings, but puts just a little bit too much force on it. Mo can't catch it. It's out of bounds. So damn close. Cheyenne Parker is brought in for a few minutes, but then she commits her third foul of the game, and off to the bench she goes. Next possession, shot clock winding down. Two seconds left, one second left, and once again, another pass way too hard. Connecticut is also out-rebounding Atlanta 24-13, and the Dream have had five turnovers over the last five possessions. 3.40 left in the half, and AD finally scores the Dream's first points of the quarter. She gets fouled and gets the free throw. In attendance tonight, Dikembe Mutombo, an Atlanta Hawk for five of his 18 seasons in the NBA, two-time defensive player of the year with the Hawks, and the originator of everyone's favorite taunt. A nice uh, distraction from the fact that the Dream can't stay out of foul trouble. A minute and 30 left, Beatrice Montpremier scores a two for the Dream. The only reason that's noteworthy is that it's the second time the Dream have scored this quarter. And that's all they would get for the rest of it. 39-22 at the half, the Dream got outscored 20-5. to five. Now, interesting thing here, neither team scored a three-pointer that quarter. There have been only two games in WNBA history where a three-pointer wasn't made by either team. July 6, 2004, which was Houston Comets versus the Detroit Shock, and August 8, 2001, Washington versus the Miami Soul. Also, thanks to Minnesota's four-point second quarter against Washington on the opening weekend of the season, 
Atlanta's five in the second quarter of this game was not the lowest scoring period of the season. Just really close. To start the third, Jonquil Jones runs over Ari McDonald like she owns a place and, again, gets called for it. But on the bright side, Atlanta's first two possessions resulted in buckets. On the third, Ryan Howard knocks the three. Not a lot of good things happening for Atlanta after that, though. A lot of calls going against them, some of which probably really shouldn't be made. With three minutes left, the Dream start to get something of a second win. Consecutive baskets, including two straight three-pointers by Ari McDonald. That's four for the team this quarter after not scoring any in the first two. Cheyenne Parker picks up her fifth foul, not all of which was really deserved, but Dewana Bonner would uh, play a game of stick your elbow in somebody else's nose to even things up just a little bit. 55-44 to to end the third, the Sun lead, but the Dream did outscore them 22-16. to John Quell Jones picks up her fourth foul in the fourth quarter, and Nas Hillman gets both free throws. Jones really should have a lot more than just four fouls, I think. Ari McDonald finally cuts Connecticut's lead to single digits. She and Ryan Howard have 51% of Atlanta's points this game. Ari is 3-for-5 on three-pointers. The rest of the team is 2-for-13. But that lack of three-point conversion isn't nearly as frustrating to me as all the wide-open looks right at the net that just aren't going in. And I'm not talking about just layups either. Short-range shots, ship shots that should go in 99% of the time, they're just not going in. And they've also been struggling with defensive rebounds all day long. So many of these turnovers are because they can't gain control of the ball either before it goes out of bounds or on the rebound. I don't know what Tanisha Wright needs to do to stop these, but she better figure something out pretty soon. Halfway through the fourth, Atlanta trails only by 10. Until, of course, Courtney Williams gets a three, and it just got uglier from there. I didn't take a whole lot more notes beyond that. 72-61, the final score. The second time this season that the Sun outscored the Dream by double digits. The Sun shot only 2 for 20, 10% beyond the arc today, the worst three-point mark in franchise history, and ninth in league history with at least 20 attempts to earn only two three-point makes. They were the only one of those nine teams to win. Now the positives for Atlanta. Ryan Howard and Cheyenne Parker have gone seven straight games with at least one block, and in both games against the Sun this season, all nine active Dream players earned at least one point, one rebound, and one assist. Prior to this season, it had occurred eight times total in team history. These stats are taken from ENFP Dream Fan on Twitter, someone who you really should follow if you're into stats, trivia, and other goodies, not just for the Dream, but all the league. Follow them on Twitter, you owe it to yourself. <laughs> Tuesday is the next game. They're on the road against the Washington Mystics on ESPN2. I'll see you then.